right, so as you can see from that flood of comments, everyone thinks that Prismatic Titan only has Syntheseps and Point Contact Cannon Brace that are viable. And while I have a ton of builds in mind, uh, this was the first one I wanted to start. Like there's lots that I have in mind that aren't based around these two or melees that will be very strong in endgame for Titans. But this is the one I most wanted to make a build around because it features two exotics that I've wanted to make into a build video for a long, long time. So let's just jump right into it. It's centered around the exotic arms second chance. They have the armor perk, Myrmidon's Reach. Gain a second charge of your shield throw melee. Your shield throw melee now weakens targets and becomes shield piercing, stunning barrier champions. When you stun a barrier champion with your shield throw melee, you, gain, uh, you regain a melee charge. So basically when you get a stun with the actual shield throw, you get your melee back, which is incredibly strong as I will point out. So one thing I want to talk about is you could make this build on Void as well, especially with controlled demolition because hitting a target with a Void ability or volatile explosion makes them volatile. So you're going to get volatile rounds, which when we get to the exotic weapon is very important. And then offensive bulwark, uh, your grenade charges significantly faster. You have increased melee range and damage when you have an overshield and shield throw will actually give you a bit of an overshield. So this also works nice on Void Titan, but this is going to be centered around Prismatic Titan, which I think it's stronger on. I recently did a Celestial Nighthawk build showing how Celestial is actually better on Prismatic than Solar. So check that out after this one if you haven't seen that. Um, but also this second chance build is also better on Prismatic. And I would argue for end game like GMs, this build is better, definitely better than Point Contact Cannon Brace in my opinion and probably better than the Syntheseps Consecration if you don't know how to play aggressively. So while this is a melee centric build in a sense, um, it's not an aggro build play style. So yeah, anyways, I talked about the shield throw and we all know Void is very strong this season. So I'm just going to go over what I like to run. So again, this will really come down to surges. So you can pick whatever uh, super is best for the surge. I really like Twilight Arsenal though. It applies weaken. It's really fun. Um, yeah, it's good. I go with Rally Barricade for the shorter cooldown. And then of course we have Shield Throw because we're using second chance gauntlets. And then we have Suppressor Grenade. And again, this comes into Collective Obligation, which I will get to in a bit. But Suppressor Grenades, suppression is actually a very strong verb, uh, but it's just very hard to use. There's not a lot of things that can apply it outside of Suppression Grenade. There's like Tractor Cannon and maybe a couple other things. But um, yeah, Suppression Grenades are really good, especially in this build, as I'll get to, and they can stun Overload Champions. So then I run Diamond Lance. Again, this is a build that is centered around being at distance so something like consecration not that great i don't like unbreakable because it uses my grenade and we want to be using our grenades offensively so yeah diamond lance very very good it can freeze targets uh which allows you to deal with unstops and uh yeah i just like diamond lances and it gives you three fragment slots and then so does dranger's lash and again this can deal with unstops so you just cast your barricade it will suspend enemies uh really really good Again, the aspects, everything is just more centered around your shield throw, but these are nice aspects to pair with it. So first we have Facet of Dawn. Powered melee hits against targets make you radiant. Powered melee final blows make you and nearby allies radiant. So we have huge uptime on our shield throw. Ideally, if you could get your strength to 100, do that um, and try to get your discipline up, but obviously you need 100 resilience first before specking into those. So spec resilience first, then strength, then discipline. I actually like a balance of either 70-90 or 80-80 because you actually do have good uptime on your shield throws because like I said, when you pierce a barrier's shield, you get your melee back. So if you're using this properly, uh, you will not really ever be hurting for shield throws. And I'll talk about kind of how to use them optimally. So definitely Facet of Dawn because that's going to give you a 25% weapon bonus. And again, this is more based around using your weapons than your abilities. So this is very, very strong, even though it gives minus 10 to strength. Definitely run this. Then I run uh, Facet of Hope. While you have an elemental buff, your class ability regens more quickly. So this seems kind of useless, but you pretty much always have an elemental buff. And uh, yeah, that extra class ability will come in handy when I get to the mods. Facet of Balance, rapidly defeating targets with light damage grants melee energy. 
Rapidly defeating targets with darkness damage grants grenade energy, so this is just huge for our ability cooldowns. Facet of Bravery, defeating targets with grenades grants volatile rounds. So I mentioned how on Void, if you got a shield throw with controlled demolition, you would just get volatile rounds. So here we're getting volatile rounds by getting a grenade kill. And suppression grenades can actually kill like lower tier enemies, even in uh, like Grandmaster difficulty, because I was running this uh, more than 25 under light in some of the lost sectors and it was getting kills. So that's how we're going to get volatile rounds, which again works great with collective obligation. Facet of Dominance, your Void Grenades weaken targets and your Arc Grenades jolt targets. So if you're running, well, I guess Suppression Grenades also deal with uh, with overloads, but you could also run this with a Pulse Grenade and Jolt Grenades if you wanted, which is nice. But again, I go with the Void Grenades to weaken targets. So this is all about applying weaken. Your Shield Throw can apply weaken because of Second Chance and your Grenade can apply weaken. And then you can also get Radiant. So you're dealing a 15% debuff here and then 25% damage buff here. And then facet of protection, while surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. Um, you're not often surrounded by combatants because you're often playing at a distance, but if you are, this will help you stay alive. But I just really like it for the plus 10 strength for my stats. So uh, those are what I run. You can run what you like, but I really like facet of dawn for this play loop. Because like I said, even at like lower than 25 under light in some of these lost sectors, when I stun a champion, I'm able to throw out my shield throw, which is going to weaken it 15%. And when I do that, I get radiant. So I'm dealing 25% more damage. So it really helps you to just uh, shred through champions when you stun them. And that's kind of what this build is all about. It's not amazing ad clear like Consecration Titan and all that, but it's really, really good at dealing with champions because you get those two buffs uh, pretty much every champion that you have and how you can keep even more uptime on your weaken is collective obligation. So it says this weapon leeches void debuffs when damaging targets that are suppressed, weakened or volatile. Once charged, press to swap firing modes. In this mode, damage from this weapon applies the same void debuffs that were leeched. So the play loop, if you can get it down, is chuck out a suppressor grenade and ideally you're going to tag up an enemy but not kill it, which is going to suppress it. You're also going to kill like a red bar, which is going to give you volatile rounds from facet of bravery. And with facet of dominance, it's going to weaken a target. So you're going to get all three. You're going to get suppression, you're going to get volatile, and you're going to get weaken um, just from one grenade. So once you have that on collective obligation, there is a way to just roll through all the enemies with Collective Obligation and never lose those buffs again. So it's all about getting that initial play loop going. So you want to be really smart with your grenade uh, the first time you chuck it. It doesn't always work out perfectly, but it's very strong. And then if you apply those, you have like a 15 second timer or something on Collective Obligation. And as it counts down, once you want to spread like the Suppress and Weaken and Volatile, at about one or two seconds left on a high health target that's not going to die. And then if you wait a second or two and then shoot it again, you're going to get all those buffs back and then you can do the reload charge again and just start spreading suppression, weaken and volatile. But even if you don't have all those buffs, the one buff that you'll pretty much always have is weaken thanks to second chance um, because you can just chuck that out uh, shield throws do not do a lot of damage in high-end content, and I have found that their, uh, their, like, tracking is pretty shit. You actually have to be accurate with them. Maybe it's a skill issue, but I've definitely missed a few, few shield throws, uh, when doing the testing for this build. But as long as you're hitting your shield throws, that's going to apply weaken, and then you can just, uh, leech weaken with collective obligation pretty much at will. So you'll pretty much always have weaken on your gun and then if things are going perfectly you'll also have volatile and suppression so ideally you'll have all three but even weaken is really strong and that is because of expanding abyss you must run this void sources deal increased damage to weaken targets so normally weaken is 15 percent but from void sources this is going to be 25 percent so uh pulse rifle's got a huge buff and then so collective obligations already doing well and then it's going to hit for 25% more damage because of expanding abyss uh, as long as you're leeching off. So if you leech the weaken and then you activate it, 
um, it's going to be dealing 25% more damage. And then if you have a uh, facet of Dawn, so say you just chucked out a melee to make them weaken, you're also going to have Radiant, so you're dealing 25% more damage there. So Collective Obligation is absolutely chewing through adds, even in the hardest of content, uh, when you get all the buffs rolling and stuff. So it's really, really strong. And again, you can just spread this around at will. And then if you don't have any charges, you can just chuck out your melee, and then you're doing... Uh, you get the weaken and then you just start going in with collective obligation. And the other nice thing is, I don't think it says it here. Uh, so this weapons magazine is automatically reloaded when you gain devour, avoid overshield or become invisible. So the void overshield part is also easy to get thanks to void hegemony. While you have a void or prismatic subclass equipped, defeating weakened targets provides a small void overshield. So again, I talked about how collective obligation is just spreading weakened to everything and then you're getting an overshield constantly thanks to Void Hegemony. So as you get those kills with the weapon, uh, it's reloading itself. So again, in that Celestial Nighthawk build I made, I had Bad Juju on, and one reason I love Bad Juju is it has like subsistence on steroids. It completely reloads itself as long as you get a kill, and so does Umbral Sustenance on Collective Obligation. So it just pairs beautifully with this build. like. Oh, it, it is so, so good. And like I said, I've wanted to make a collective obligation build so bad, but I just never really liked suppressor grenades and just kind of the limitations of Void Titan. But now with Prismatic Titan, we can make it even better thanks to the ability to also get Radiant. And then, like I said, with these artifact mods, Void Hegemony and Expanding Abyss, it just takes this build to the next level. So we'll just go through the rest of my artifact mods. Actually, we'll go through the weapons first. So weapons are pretty much completely optional based on Surge outside of Collective Obligation. This build is basically built around Collective Obligation. If you don't have that from Vow of the Disciple, I would recommend Graviton Lance, which is another really strong void exotic um, exotic primary that uh, pulse rifle that I plan on making some builds around to have some really fun ones in mind. Um, and it's going to be very strong, but Collective Obligation is... Again, I like to theme my builds, and this one is all about spreading, weaken, suppression, and uh, volatile, and nothing does that better than Collective Obligation. But again, any good Void Pulse Rifle would work well in this build. And then there's Anti-Barrier Pulse on the Artifact this season. Next we have I Love the Call. Um, this one has Demo and Vorpal, uh, just because it's very consistent on Champions. But Lead from Gold, One for All, whatever you want to run, uh, this is a very good sidearm and it's got unstoppable. So with the suppression, you can handle overloads very, very easily, as you can see in the background gameplay. And then you've got unstoppable sidearm and you've got anti-barrier pulse. So this build just with your two weapons can easily handle all of the champion types. So then you can run basically whatever you want in your heavy slot. And again, that's just going to come down to, uh, to the Surge, but I really like the OG Wendigo because it's got disorienting grenades. So auto loading explosive light, but disorienting grenades. So it's the only heavy grenade launcher in the game that has this. And again, I, I like I said, we're spreading suppression. So none of the enemies can really attack us. And then you can also just fire out a Wendigo shot. So it just fits with the theme of my build, which is what I was going for. But you can run literally whatever heavy you want here. And uh, one that I definitely recommend that I don't have on my character, I'll just transfer it over quickly, um, especially if it's Void Surge, is because of Expanding Abyss and Void Hegemony, Envious Assassin, Bait and Switch, Edge Transit goes incredibly hard with this build. Um, again, I was one stunning champions when it was Void Surge just running this, and it was excellent, so definitely a good option. So back to the rest of the artifact mods, unstoppable sidearm, anti-barrier pulse. And don't forget, like I said, even if you didn't have an unstop weapon, you do have diamond lances and dranger's lash for suspending unstops, though it's not quite as reliable in my opinion. So then for the rest of the artifact mods, I don't really pay attention to these first few slots, but maybe there's some better stuff to run. Uh, threaded blast is actually nice to run because it says destroy a tangle with a strand weapon. So we do have the call on and then elemental siphon rapid final blows with a kinetic weapon or a weapon matching your equipped super creates an elemental pickup. So if you were running the blade fury, 
then you could make tangles with elemental siphon uh, if you were running a kinetic weapon. So if you're running something like mountaintop or succession or whatever, but again, I just really like the call. Void Hegemony and Expanding Abyss I already talked about. Radiant Orbs, so while you have a Solar or Prismatic subclass equipped, picking up an Orb of Power makes you Radiant. This is obviously very, very strong. Galvanic Armor, uh, while you have an Arc or Prismatic subclass equipped, incoming damage from combatants is reduced while amplified. This one doesn't apply too much, so maybe you could run Counter Energy instead of Galvanic Armor. Again, this is just like general play stuff, but now that I'm looking at it, when you are when you or a member of your fire team stuns a champion, you gain energy for your least charged ability. And I talked about how this is really about throwing your shields and your suppressor grenades. So if you can get energy back from counter energy, that's the way to go. So in the future, I'll take galvanic armor off and put on counter energy and then shield crush while you have woven mail, frost armor or void overshield. And I talked about how often we can have void overshield. Your melee recharges faster and deals increased damage. So now our shield throws will do increased damage and recharge faster. And then while you're amplified or radiant, your grenade charges faster. And we get radiant from radiant orbs and from throwing our grenade, or sorry, throwing our shield throw with facet of dawn. So shield crush is absolutely awesome. You could also run transference if you wanted, gain increased grenade and melee damage while transcendent. And this build, if you are running like the call, uh, you can get transcendent pretty, pretty frequently. So it's really nice but I definitely recommend Expanding Abyss for making uh, Collective Obligation just go ham, and especially if you're running a Void Heavy as well, and then Shield Crush. So those are the two options you want there. Onto mods, uh, Harmonic Siphon for sure, because you're just shredding with, um, sorry, not necessarily Harmonic Siphon. I have Harmonic Siphon because I have the Twilight Arsenal, but if I didn't, I would go with Void Siphon. Then I have Heavy Ammo Finder, because if you didn't know, um, Primary ammo weapon final blows will help you find ammo more quickly and this is even more so with exotic weapons and again this is all about making collective obligation just shred through ads. Uh, but because I have a void super on I run harmonic siphon and then strand siphon for my sidearm but it comes down to how you want to build around it. On the gauntlets I have font of focus which so I have 70 discipline, but every time I have an armor charge, I'm going to go up to 100 discipline with font of focus. So that reduces my suppressor grenade cooldown. Impact induction causing damage with a powered melee also reduces my grenade cooldown and then grants class ability when you cause damage with a powered melee attack. And again, you can be chucking out your shield throws often. So you're just going to have huge uptime on your grenade and class ability on the chest piece, just the rainbow of resistances or whatever resistance you need for the activity. On the legs, I go Recuperation, Replenishes Health each time you pick up an Orb of Power, but you could also go Invigoration. Then I go Absolution, reduces all ability cooldowns each time you pick up an Orb of Power. And then Innervation, reduces Grenade cooldown each time you pick up an Orb of Power. So Innervation, when we pick up a Grenade, or an Orb of Power, we're getting a chunk of Grenade Energy back, and it's going to give us Armor Charge, which is going to give us Font of Focus and it gives us Radiant from Radiant Orbs. So you really want um, Void Siphon on for a Collective Obligation because as you pick up Orbs, it's just going to help this build even further. And then on the class item, I actually have Reaper for easily making an Orb. So every time we cast our uh, Barricade, it, you have 10 seconds to get a kill and then you'll make an Orb of Power then Font of Restoration is just going to increase our recovery, which just helps with survivability. But again, only when we have Armor Charge. And then Outreach. So if we are close to our melee but don't quite have it yet, I can just cast a Barricade to get a little chunk of Shield Throw uh, energy. So that's it for the build. It's incredibly strong. Oh yeah, I got to show the Drip. I quite like the Drip. I love Melchizedek Bramble. It's a cool shader. And then Bergusian Knight is also a nice one. And then I went with the Desolation Diver Plate, which has the shield, because this is obviously all based around our shield. Then we got the nice like pinkish purple glows going on on the class item. And the Second Chance Gauntlets honestly look really cool. And this is the Contender Helm from one of the, uh, the Summer Guardian games or whatever it's called. So yeah, I quite like the fashion on this one. I think it's pretty cool. And the build itself is very, very strong and effective. And yeah, I just love it. I love the gameplay loop. Like I said, I've wanted to make a themed build around Collective Obligation for so long. 
Uh, but to me, Titan is the one it works the best on because if I'm running Warlock, I like to run like Controverse Hold grenades, uh, Vortex grenades. So you're not really ever gonna get suppression. And then on Hunter, uh, I just don't really like using suppressor grenades either. So I don't know, I just felt that it really suited the Titan. And then Second Chance has been buffed since it came out, I do believe. And then Collective Obligation obviously got the huge buff with Final Shape. So in the end, I'm glad I waited to make this build because I think this is like the strongest it's ever been, especially with Expanding Abyss and Void Hegemony. So yeah, really enjoy this build. Give it a shot. GMs are coming out soon. So this build is going to go super, super hard. I guarantee it. Like I said, I soloed the Nightfall and then I did a team Nightfall in like 12 minutes, no comms. And uh, it was just really, really good. So yeah, that's it for the video. If you're still watching, then thanks so much for watching to the end. A like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. And enjoy this build because it's really, really cool. And maybe it will shut up all the commenters saying that there's only two builds on Titan because I guarantee you there's a lot more, even just on Prismatic, uh, there's a lot more end game viable builds. You just have to get creative and think outside the box. Not that this is like thinking that far outside the box. Second Chance is really, really good. It's just no one talks about it for whatever reason. I don't really know. But like I said, I wanted to do lots of testing uh, to make sure it was as good as I thought it was going to be. And I guarantee you it is. It's got my stamp of approval for sure. So anyways, I'll stop rambling. Thanks for watching. Take care.